how China, in less than two decades, turned policy into power and power into global influence. This series takes you inside that transformation from the birth of China's electric vehicle dream to the battery empires, the Tesla deal, the smart car wars, the charging revolution, and the global pushback now. Each episode reveals not just what happened, but what it means for business, technology, and the future of mobility. Welcome to our China Electric Vehicle Revolution series, a blueprint of how nations reinvent industries. Let's begin where it all started. At the dawn of the 2000s, China was the biggest factory of the world. Its oil imports soared. Its cities were blanketed in smog. It is the most polluted city. And its car market was dominated by foreign joint ventures. While the West debated climate goals and the future of electric vehicles, Beijing quietly began to plan something very ambitious. In 2009 came the 10 Cities, 1,000 Vehicles Program, an experiment to deploy electric buses and taxis across pilot cities. Two years later, the new energy vehicle industry plan set national targets and infrastructure mandates. These weren't just green policies. They were a roadmap to end dependence on imported oil and heavy pollutions. Above all, create another industry. But a plan, however bold, needs a mastermind behind it. Who convinced Beijing that the future belonged to batteries, not engines. That mind was Wang Peng, a mechanical engineer who once worked for Audi in Germany. He became the Minister of Science and Technology of China later. Wang returned home in the 1990s with a radical idea. China could skip the internal combustion era entirely. And he made electric vehicle a national priority calling it a strategic shortcut to industrial sovereignty. He wasn't talking about saving the planet. He was talking about reshaping industry. Beijing listened, and the blueprint became a mission. Yet, vision alone doesn't power factories. How could a country turn political will into production reality? Between 2009 and 2015, the government spent more than 100 billion yuan, around 15 billion dollars, on subsidies that transformed city fleets into rolling laboratories. Every new order of electric buses or taxes drew suppliers, investors, and local governments competing to host pilot programs. Subsidies were not simple giveaways. They were national scale research funding. The result was a positive loop. Policy created demand. Demand created scale. And scale made EPS viable. Still, policy can light the fuse, but it's entrepreneurs who make the explosion. Who would seize this opportunity to turn China's vision into real machines on the road? Sorry to interrupt your video. But I just want to thank you for discovering our tiny channel in the vast YouTube universe. The world often feels divided, broken into pieces, but that's exactly why we started this channel. To build a bridge between the East and the West and share a deeper understanding of both sides. Every week we'll bring you videos just like this one. If you find value here, why not join us on this journey? Subscribe and let's grow and have fun together. In Shenzhen, battery maker BID reimagined itself as a car company, designing both cells and vehicles in one vertically integrated system. In Shanghai, startup Neo promised a connected, intelligent EV for China's new middle class. Tech giants like Tencent and Huawei poured talent into mobility. Public funding met private ambition a uniquely Chinese blend of state orchestration and market energy. In addition, in 2019, Shanghai approved the first wholly foreign-owned auto plant in Chinese history, the Tesla Gigafactory 3. 
built in less than a year, became both a symbol and a school. Local suppliers learned fast. Quality standards soared and confidence followed. And soon, those once called copycats began out innovating their teachers. But what would turn ambition into global dominance? The heart lies within every vehicle, the battery. It is China's new oil and the foundation of its next industrial leap. In the next episode, we enter the mega factories to see how chemistry became strategy and how controlling the battery meant controlling the future. Subscribe to our channel and do not miss the next episode. To summarize this episode, China's electric vehicle revolution began as a bold national strategy, not an accident. Facing pollution, oil dependence, and foreign dominance, in 2009, Beijing launched 10 cities, 1,000 vehicles plan and made a use a core industrial priority. Former Audi engineer Wang Gang spearheaded this vision, convincing leaders that electricity could deliver technological independence. Massive subsidies between 2009 and 2015 turned cities into real-world labs and created a self-reinforcing EV ecosystem. Private innovators like BID and NEO alongside global players such as Tesla, transform policy into world-class manufacturing. Today, the engine of China's EV lies in its batteries, which we will talk about in the next episode. Subscribe to our channel and do not miss out.